Hello everyone, this is Robert and this is my lathe. In this video, I'm gonna do a little bit of organizing for all of the little tool holders that I have for my quick change tool post. These are these little holders that hold the cutting tool on the lathe and I have a bunch of them and they really don't have a good home. I'm kind of putting them in this top drawer, but as you can see from them being kind of cluttered up on the chip tray itself, I'm really not using that. So I want to take some aluminum extrusion in my 3D printer and make a little rail system that attaches directly to the lathe. So let's go take a look at that. Hello there. So the idea is to mount a rail to the back of this chip guard. I just so happened to have a bunch of these aluminum extrusions. I got them from like Xyltech or something like that. They sell on eBay and they sell directly and they have a really good price on these. So this is a one meter, 30 millimeter by 30 millimeter black extrusion. So I'm gonna cut it down to size to meet the width of the chip tray and it's gonna kind of sit up here like that. Pretty simple stuff. However, this chip tray is a little wobbly. Um, it's connected just fine on this side, doesn't wobble over here, but on this side, it's just kind of connected directly to the bed and there's really nothing on the back side. So I made this little 3D printed foot that is really nothing special. This will sit up underneath on the back side and hopefully stiffen this up a little bit. So I'm gonna kind of swing the camera around to the back of this and show you how I'm going to attach this little foot. I'm using just a piece of printer paper to cut out a template that will match the face and the hole location for this little foot. It's kind of not in an exact spot. You just kind of have to shove the foot in there and then mark the location. But of course, since the location is obfuscated by the face of the foot, I'm just using this little template. So then when I transfer it over to the actual chip guard, I'll mark the location of where the foot goes, remove the foot, then put the template in place, and then I can mark the hole locations through the template, and then of course drill those holes out. So this little foot actually worked a lot better than I thought it did. Um, this is really sturdy now. Um, I am going to add a little piece of double stick tape underneath of it because this can still lift up. So as I'm pulling off the uh, tool holders, I don't want this to wobble around and just a little bit of tape on the bottom should help with that. I'm just using some double-sided carpet tape on the bottom side of the foot, scuffing up the surface a little bit, adhering it, and then putting it all back together. For screws, I'm using number eight sheet metal screws that are threaded directly into the plastic. I just use the dimensions in SolidWorks for a number eight tap, and that will give me the right dimensions that I can screw directly into the plastic. And there it is. Um, I just used some carpet tape, and I don't know if you can see, but when I actually lift this up, it's pulling up the chip tray with it. So you could break this free if you really wanted to, but yeah, that's holding. So now that the foot is in place, it's time to cut the extrusion. I think I ended up with like 28 inches, and this stuff cuts beautifully on the bandsaw, but you could use a hacksaw if you wanted to, of course. The last thing to do before all of this gets put together is to tap the ends of the extrusion. It's uh, set up for an M8 tap, so I'm just using a spiral flute M8 um, with some tap magic in the drill and throwing some M8 threads on this. I'm just gonna be putting some little end caps on this just to clean it up and make it look a little bit more finished. So here are all the finished 3D printed piece along with the extrusion. Uh, we've got the little end caps here like I talked about. They just kind of snap onto the end, make it look kind of pretty, and they have a little countersink. And then we got the actual brackets and then the holders for the tool. These were um, actually a little bit tricky. I went through several iterations to get all the chamfers and all the geometry right. Um, they sit on there. They have a um, hole through them, obviously, so they'll just sit with the traditional T-nut. And then this just slides nicely on there. They fit 
relatively snug, but with all these chamfers and drafts and everything, it slides on very easy. You can kind of hit it in an angle and it will always kind of find its location, which is really nice. And then they are symmetrical, so you can use them for left hand or right hand tools. And I've got a bunch of these printed out so I can space these all along the rail. You just simply need to loosen the screw, slide them over, tighten it. So those are nice and adjustable. For the actual bracket, this was pretty tricky. I went through many, many iterations on this, and we end up with this really strange looking little piece. This clips on the ledge of the chip guard, and there's a little lip down there. What I found was that there's almost no 90 degree angles on that chip guard, and it's just really hard to make a part. So I just have a hole in the back, and that will actually go through a hole in the chip guard. I'll just drill a hole through and use one of those self-tapping screws so it'll actually latch onto it. And then this little hook on the front will hold it in place. I'll kind of show you that when I put it on. And then this up here is a C profile for the extrusion. So it kind of just slides on like that. And then that actually holds it onto the extrusion. And I added just a little bit of an angle because you obviously don't want these just sitting like that. You want them kind of tilted up a little bit. So yeah, there's just a little bit of an angle on there and then a hole on the back so that you can actually tie it directly into the extrusion. You're not just relying on the snap aspect of this. So yeah, let me get um, these three mounted and then we can slide the rail in and start mounting the actual two holders. Mounting the brackets is pretty straightforward. On the left and the right hand side, I just moved them two inches in and then I just tried and centered the center one. They have a nice satisfying snap or click when they are put into place. And then you just mark the hole from the back, drill the hole, and then go ahead and put in the sheet metal screw. Once the three brackets are in place, I can just simply slide the extrusion down the whole length of the brackets, and then we can just use these screws from the back and fasten it all in place. I printed out a total of 12 of the tool holder holders, I guess that's what they're called. And um, I'm putting these on, just kind of sliding on six on one side, six on the other side. I'll have six left hand and six right hand. And, you know, I'll figure out someday exactly how I want them configured and spaced and everything. But yeah, I'm just sliding six on one side, six on the other side and calling it a day. And the only thing left to do before we start putting the tool holders on this is to screw on the end caps to give it that nice, beautiful, finished look. And here it is with all of the tools that I have um, currently lined up and really happy with how this turned out. You can see I've got um, quite a bit of space here in the middle for even more tools, probably maybe another four or something like that, depending on if they're the big um, boring heads. Um, but yeah, really simple. They come right off, drop them down in the tool post, lock it in place, undo it, pop them right back in two ways. Obviously this is always much more difficult on camera because I'm trying to do it in a weird awkward way. Um, but yeah, I'd say they um, fit easier on these than they do on the actual tool post itself. Um, so yeah, really awesome. This is going to clean up my lathe setup quite a bit and give me an excuse to get a couple more tool holders. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. A couple little notes. All of the files for everything here are down below in the description, so go ahead and check that out. One quick note, these brackets will most likely not fit your lathe, even if you have the exact same lathe as I do. I'm including them just so you can kind of get an idea of what I was doing and maybe take a look at them, modify them, things like that. But this is varying distances across the whole length of it. Nothing is set up at a 90 degree angle, so it took a lot of tweaking to kind of get these right but it should just kind of give you an idea what I did so that you can do it on your own. Um, but if you're using a 30 millimeter rail, these pieces should be totally fine and it can be very easily scaled for like a 20 or 25 or a 30. You can't go above 30 though, you're gonna have a problem, it's just too big. So um, yeah, I'd be curious to see if anyone else makes one of these, it's relatively inexpensive. I think the rail itself was like $10. I also have a link to that down below in the description, nothing sponsored or anything like that. The Xyltech or whoever it is, 
is, is where I got these from. 8020 has stopped selling directly on eBay, so it's been a little bit harder to find aluminum extrusion in small quantities. And um, I've bought a few things from them before and they've always been, you know, quick shipping and stuff like that and good prices. So check that out. Check out the um, files for the actual 3D printed components. And thanks for watching. Check me out on Facebook for any updates to my channel and I'll see you again in my next video. Thanks again.